The next learning objective is to describe the differences between service, merchandising, and manufacturing companies. Before we go further, let's go over some simple but critical vocabulary. Cost versus price. Let's say you have a company that sells iPhones. The store is called iPhones Galore. iPhones Galore purchases an iPhone for $400 and wants to sell it for $500. So the first question is, what is the cost? The cost is $400. The next question is, what is the price? The price is $500. So it's critical to understand that cost is the amount iPhones Galore pays for something and price is the amount iPhones Galore will sell it for. And finally, price is sometimes called sales price. Now we'll discuss the differences between service, merchandising, and manufacturing companies. We'll start off with the easiest to understand service companies. Service companies like Larry's Lawn Mowing Service sell their time, skill, and knowledge. Examples include accounting firms, schools, hospitals, daycare, and landscaping businesses like Larry's Business. Accounting for service companies is the simplest of the three. Now let's look at the income statement and balance sheet of a service company. So now we're going to look at the income statement and balance sheet of a service company like Larry's Lawn Mowing Service. Remember that for service companies, the income statement formula is simply revenue minus expenses equals net income. Net income is also known as profit. You may be asking yourself, why is the bottom line on this income statement operating income instead of net income? Well, operating income is the income you generate through your operations. This is your revenue from sales of products and services performed in your daily operations, minus the expenses it takes to produce and sell them. Operating income does not take into consideration things like income from investments, expenses from financing or taxes, or one-time extraordinary expenses or income items, such as the gain on the sale of an asset. For our purposes, to simplify things, you can think of operating income as similar to net income. Now notice this income statement is a single step income statement. All that means is the formula is simply revenue minus expense. Notice there is no cost of goods sold because this service company sells services, not goods. Remember, goods also means products. As for the balance sheet, by the way, we are only looking at the asset section so we can save some space. Notice there is no inventory account. Why isn't there one? Well, Larry sells services, not products. So there is no need for an inventory account like merchandisers need. Now let's talk about merchandising companies. Merchandising companies resell products they previously bought from suppliers. Examples include Target, Walmart, and grocery stores like Safeway. So on this slide, the merchandiser is iPhones galore. They buy iPhones from Apple, the manufacturer of the merchandise. When they buy the merchandise, this increases their merchandise inventory account. This is an asset account on their balance sheet. Then, when the customer buys the merchandise, which is the iPhone, the inventory account is reduced and the customer takes possession of the merchandise. So it's important to understand the flow. It goes from manufacturer to merchandiser to customer. Now let's look at the income statement and balance sheet of a merchandiser like iPhones Galore. On the left are the financial statements of a service company for comparison. Remember, service companies do not sell products, so they do not need a cost of goods expense, excuse me, they do not need a cost of goods sold expense account or an asset account called inventory. Now let's first concentrate on the income statement of a merchandiser like iPhones Galore, the merchandiser that sells iPhones. 
So on this income statement, what is the largest expense? It's cost of goods sold for $3,600. Remember, cost of goods sold is often just called COGS, C-O-G-S. Because COGS is usually a merchandiser's largest expense, it's listed first. If you forgot what cost of gold, if you forgot what cost of goods sold means, its name explains it all. It's the cost of the merchandise that the merchandiser sold. Remember, cost means it's the price that the merchandise paid for it. It's not what the customer paid. So once we subtract COGS from sales revenue, we get gross profit. A simplified explanation of this income statement is the company sold a product for $7,600 so that it had earlier paid $3,600 for. Or perhaps, and more realistically, they sold many products for a total of $7,600, and those products had earlier cost them a total of $3,600 to purchase. Then on the income statement after that, we subtract selling and administrative expenses. These would include expenses such as salaries of the salespeople, insurance for the store, and utilities for the store. Now let's look at the balance sheet at the bottom of the screen. Of course, we're only looking at the asset section to save space. Notice that there is an asset account called merchandise inventory. What does this represent? This is the amount of merchandise on the company's shelves on December 31st. We say December 31st because that's the date on the balance sheet. So merchandise inventory is the unsold merchandise. This means they have some merchandise sitting on their shelves that has not yet been sold. How much merchandise did the company sell? Well, to find that answer, you'd have to look at the income statement. That's the cost of goods sold, $3,600. So remember, inventory and COGS are always listed at its cost to the merchandiser, not the sales price they think they may sell it for.